Joe, yep. so right. can you please just quickly introduce yourself to the camera? Yeah. Um, ben Bruce from Arsenal yeah. Alexandria, and I'm awesome. <laughs> well right. Since the release of Reckless and Relentless, how do you think you've changed as a band and as a person? Um, well, Reckless and Relentless is uh, it's basically a true story about the band, like all the shit that we went through, too many drugs, too much drinking, just indulging in everything that we should have been indulging in at the time. And um, I think as a band, we've really grown and learned from that. We've learned from our own mistakes, which is uh, Obviously, a positive thing. We used to go on stage just completely drunk, fucked up our face, and just I don't know. We all lost relationships and friends and stuff. And um, like I said, we've, we've learned from that now. Like, I don't drink at all before I go on stage anymore. Danny doesn't drink on tour, period. Um, so yeah, I guess we've just grown up a little bit. And yeah. We've we've experienced a lot more than a lot of people our age will have done. And um, you know, it's it's really helped us to grow up and you know, concentrate on our career, which is a good thing, I reckon. Yeah. You supported Guns N' Roses last year. How was that? Did any crazy antics go on with Guns N' Roses off stage? Um, to be honest, we didn't really see them. We met them all except, we didn't meet Axel at all. We met the rest of them, but it's nothing crazy. They're all a bit older, so they sort yeah. of just hung around. There was a lot of kids running around. I didn't know if it was their kids or family or something, but you know, they are older, so maybe they have families and stuff. But. Um, it it was an experience. Yeah, no, it was no. it was there was probably fifteen, fifteen to eighteen thousand people there, and while majority of them was really really supportive, you know, no one knew who the fuck we were. They were all like forty to fifty year olds, and majority of them were nice and cheery and stuff. I'd say it was between five and six thousand of them supporting us, which was uh, like I said, it's way it was way less than half the crowd that was actually booed. Nice, but still, to be booed by that many people is not a nice feeling. Yeah, but um. At the end of the day, even if everyone booed us off that stage, I wouldn't have any regrets because who gets to say they main supported Guns N' Roses, especially at our age in, in a band that's as heavy as ours. So it was uh, one of my highlights of last year anyway. Yeah. How did you actually like get to support them? Were you like, just picked out at random? Or? They asked us to. They, um, we got asked by their management of things if we'd like to open up for them. And literally, it was, it was we were on tour and we were in Orlando and the show was in New Jersey, which is fucking a long way away. Yeah. And we got called that night about two o'clock in the morning saying, hey, do you want to play Guns N' Roses today now? And we were like, what? Uh, and they were like, you have to make a decision. They asked for you guys, do you want to do it? They're like, okay, let's go. And we had to organize, we had to book flights to fly us and our crew from Orlando. We had to cancel the Orlando show, fly to New York, rent all new gear, because we couldn't, we didn't have time to get all our gear over there. It's a fucking nightmare, but yeah. uh, pulled it off somehow, so. That's all that matters, I guess. Okay. The Steps Up and Scratch uh, remix CD came out a few months ago now. How successful do you think it was, and would you be doing more projects like it in the future? Um, we're not going to do any more projects like it. It was just a one off thing that we did for fun. Um, just we'd, we'd had the idea to do it for years when we were recording Stand Up and Scream, we wanted to do it, and we just never got around to it. But um, I think it's been successful. I mean, it's, it's opened us up to a wider audience. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not really we don't count it as an Asking Alexandria album that we've released as a, as an album per se. It's just more of a fun project, small release sort of thing to give people something new to listen to whilst we're sort of writing our next album. But it, it's it's been you know received well so far. So yeah. with tonight's show being the closest to your hometown, do you expect the crowd to go just a little further, or is location no longer an issue for you? Well. I don't think location's really much of an issue, thankfully, but I'm actually from London, so I know I'm going to get a stage. And every time, the rest of them are from Yorkshire, but every time we play Leeds or something, just the whole crowd starts chanting Yorkshire. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it never happens in London, but um, yeah, they're all really excited about playing. I'm excited to play, I, I love playing everywhere, but um, I think, like you said, because it's closest to where they're all from, they're really looking forward to it. Got a lot of family coming down and stuff, so yeah. it should be good. Okay. What is it like to be branded with like the bad guy images in the rock music genre at the moment? Um, I don't know, I kind of like it to be honest. I, I mean, I think that's why one of the reasons why we've got to where we were because when we came out, especially in America, all the American bands were all Christian bands and yeah. really, really goody and concentrating on having a really clean, approachable image and stuff, which is fine, that's fair enough. But when we came along, we were just five British kids with our fucking fingers up. Everyone's like, what the fuck is that all about? So I kind of like it. We're not as big a dickhead as a lot of people say we are, but you know, yeah, it's just part and parcel, I guess. What is it like to tour with Blessed Fall? We've toured with them a few times. We've um, that's why we bought them because they're actually such good friends of ours. We've uh, 
we talked to them in Australia, we talked to them in Japan, we talked to them, you know, um, talked to them in America, and now the UK and Europe. So it's still a lot of fun. They're great guys. Everyone on this band, uh, on this tour package is is really really cool, which is nice. We, it's nice when you headline because we can just pick friends to bring out. Yeah. To um, to ensure you know that everyone has a good time. So I'm quite lucky in that aspect. What is the scariest thing you've ever witnessed once on tour? Uh. Someone's died at one of our shows before, which is really fucking horrible. He had a he had like a seizure in the pit or something, and then a show finished with him. I went outside, and he was still out there on the floor, just with the paramedics I think around him, trying to revive him and bring him to. And uh, they brought him to, and he got put in the ambulance and taken to hospital. And then we were informed by a manager that he actually he died in the ambulance again on the way to the hospital. So that's yeah. fucking horrible. And we were playing the same venue two days in a row, and that happened on the first day. And just mm. going back and playing there the second day was a bit of shit, man. Didn't really feel like playing the show, but. Yeah. What is the funniest thing you've ever witnessed while on tour? The funniest thing I've ever witnessed? Oh, God. I don't know, man. Pro it's probably normally when we're drunk, we normally do the f dumbest things. We've seen James eat shit a few times, which I always find hilarious. It's nice watching him fall out of the bus and face plant in the floor. Um, I don't know if any one thing stands out. Just we're always having a good time. I, I laugh so hard whenever I'm at tour. It's, it's like summer camp or something, really. I guess. I mean, even though we're working, we're we're all best friends and just having a really good time. I know Dan, I've seen Danny run across stage naked a few times. I thought Seattle was pretty funny when Danny was wanked. We got a lot of bad press for that. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Looking back at it now, I mean, at the time it was scary, but um, oh, fuck if you can't laugh at. You feel bad for the crowd then? Yeah, but which is why we're going back. Um, we're actually going back in March and playing a free show for them to, yeah. to say sorry and make it up to them. But that, like I said, that was during one of those periods where we were you know, indulging in far too many drugs and too much alcohol and stuff. But we, that won't be happening again, so. That would be the best. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any plans for UK festivals this year? No, I'm not sure. I haven't, um, I haven't spoken to our booking agent uh, about it. I've been concentrating on this tour. Uh, I know we've got a massive um, summer festival tour in America, but that's not until late July and that August. August. No, we're not doing August this year. We did it last year. We didn't want to do it again this year. It's a different, it's a different tour this year. Um, so yeah, I haven't really spoken to our agent. I will find out though. Yeah. I hope so because we did, we did download it from last year. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I saw you. That was pretty good. Good show. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good show. No one expected that many people to turn up and watch it. Yeah, there was like four thousand people outside the tent that couldn't even get in. So I was like, sick. Um, what? Where do you like prefer to play? Which country do you most prefer? Uh, I don't really have a preference to be honest. I used to, I used to. America obviously used to be the best just because it was biggest. But as the bands got bigger and bigger, I, I just, I love touring all over the world. It's nice. Every country is a little bit different. But like, I've been looking forward to this UK run for a really long time now, and it hasn't disappointed. The kids here have been insane. Yeah. If anything, the crowds are smaller than they are in America, but the, the people that come to the shows out here are just nuts, which just makes for a really, really, really great show. So. Yeah. Would you ever think of doing something like Ed Shikari doing on Wednesday and playing a really small venue and selling it out completely? It's going for it. Like, just playing the cockpit in Leeds, and it's like no barrier or anything like that. Would you ever do something like that in England? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I would. Sometimes the small intimate shows are more fun because everyone's right there in your face yeah. and stuff, so it's nice to get back to your roots, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. Right. We asked some fans for some questions on Tumblr, and this is what we got pretty much. The video for To The Stage seems quite realistic and hard-hitting. Is it based on something that's happened to the land before, or is there some other meaning behind it? It's just, again, it's just... It's it's an insight into what this band was going through at the time. Like like I said, we were just doing too many drugs and drinking too much and partying too hard, and and it was it was catching up with us. Like Danny was obviously always fucked up. I started getting withdrawal, and I didn't. I used to wake up, and if I hadn't had a drink, I'd just be shaking, withdrawing from alcohol and stuff. So we'd constantly have to be drunk and doing drugs all day just to get through the day. Yeah. And it was being brought to our attention that if we kept on doing this, then one of us was going to die. Like, you know, so I guess that hit home and that's what the To The Stage video sort of represents. Yeah. Right. This is from Coffee Smoke Coffee on Tumblr. How many girls do you fuck on tour? <laughs> um, now, uh, none. I, I, we, we, again, during that same period of time we went through a lot. But um, 
we're all in stable relationships now and now that we're not getting as fucked up as we used to we can see that you know we shouldn't really be doing that stuff anymore so now i'm not yeah. unless my girlfriend's out and just the one there you go this is <laughs> sex and mary jane would you fuck a ginger would i fuck a ginger would you? Everyone says no, but have you seen Isla Fisher? She's fucking yeah. hot shit. She's really hot. So that's Ali G's wife. Such my kind of look like she's a bit. So yeah, I guess uh, I would. So you would do, as long as you're a fit ginger. As long as you're a fit ginger. Yeah, that's what you're good for. Uh -huh. right. Probably shave down there too. Yeah, that's probably the best. Yeah. Right, thank you for your time. I've been John Lumbee. This has been audio scribble. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Oh, man. <laughs>